In this video, I'll explain conceptually how data is added onto blockchains and how transactions work in blockchains built for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. In what is blockchain, we talked about how secure and immutable data is on a blockchain. If you haven't watched that yet, I highly recommend you to do so. So how do we add new information? After all, a place to store information without being able to add to it isn't too useful. Also, how do you make sure that the data added is legitimate? For example, in the application of cryptocurrency, it is extremely vital that the new information we add is legitimate. We know that blocks are used to store information and the information in previous blocks are immutable. So then we need to create new blocks if we need to add new information. In the last video, I mentioned that it's very difficult to create a block. Let me go into a little bit more detail. Recall that blocks with different data must have different hash codes. Theoretically, maybe not, but for all practical purposes, we can assume so. There are restrictions hard-coded into the blockchain system. Every block's hash must start with, for example, five zeros. How is that possible? If I already have data I want to add onto the new block, how am I supposed to control the hash? The hash comes from a preset algorithm, so how do I control what the algorithm spits out? Let's look at what information we have in a block. We have data, the hash of the previous block, and timestamp. This is the data we want to store in the new block. Once I've decided that I want to add this specific data to the block, I cannot change this. Thus, we have something called nonce. Each block has a special piece of data called the nonce. Its sole purpose is for us to have the ability to manipulate the hash code to, for example, start with five zeros. We give the nonce a random value at first. We see the hash code does not start with five zeros. So we change its value and try again. Let's see what the hash code is. Still, it doesn't start with five zeros. We try again. Nope. And we guess again. There we go. Essentially, this is all just using raw computing power to guess the correct value of the knots so we can have a hash code that starts with five zeros. We call the people who try to create blocks and find nonces miners. Many miners could be simultaneously trying to create a block. Whoever computes the correct nonce first will broadcast it to the network. So the other miners hash the block's data and nonce to see if it returns the right hash with five leading zeros, for example. Once verified and over 50% agree, everyone on the network adds this new block onto their blockchain. This is the general way of adding data to a blockchain. And so far, we cannot control what miners decide to add to the blockchain. So here's the problem. If miners can just add whatever they want, how do we apply this blockchain to cryptocurrency like Bitcoin? It would be disastrous if any miner could unilaterally decide to record something like BLT sent 5,000 Bitcoins to me whenever they find the correct nonce for this piece of data. So each application of blockchain has some additional rules that dictate how data is added onto the blockchain. When miners want to update the blockchain with important data like transactions, they must take extra steps to make sure what they're adding is legit. For example, you need to make sure that BLT actually has 5,000 Bitcoins in its balance, and also that BLT actually wants to send those 5,000 Bitcoins to, say, crazy miner123. This is where keys and signatures come in. Each cryptocurrency account has its own unique private key and public key. Public keys are basically this account's address on the blockchain. They can be thought of as the username of the account. Transactions relating to this account explicitly mention this key. Private keys are only known to the owner of its corresponding public key. It's like the password to the public key. Say BLT wants to send Crazy Miner123 bitcoins. First, BLT would need to know Crazy Miner123's public key. And BLT writes down this transaction. So as you can see here, the red text on the top is BLT's public key, and it says that it wants to send 
the bottom red, red text, which is the public key of crazy minor 1, 2, 3. So basically this just means that BLT wants to send crazy minor 1, 2, 3 5,000 bitcoins. Now BLT takes this message and its private key, which is actually another string of numbers and letters, but we'll use this key to represent it here. So we add them together and hash it to get the signature. The signature is essentially the hash code of the message and the private key. Now BLT would need to announce that it would like to make this transaction. So it takes the message and the signature, which was hashed from the message and the BLT private key, and the BLT public key, and packages it together. Remember, miners are the ones with the computing power to create blocks, so BLT would need to announce to miners that it would like to add this transaction to the blockchain. Now this transaction is added to the pool of other transactions that other people want to make. None of these transactions are on the blockchain yet. This is just the pool of transactions that want to go onto the blockchain. It is up to the miners to actually add these transactions onto the blockchain. Now a miner picks a transaction he likes, usually whichever transaction gives the miner a larger tip, but we'll go into that in a later video. Let's say BLT is lucky and a miner decides to add the BLT transaction to his new block. Before this miner puts this transaction on his new block, he must first verify that this transaction is legitimate. How? First he simply looks at the message and makes sure that BLT has sufficient funds to make the proposed transaction. Then he runs it through his blockchain software that has this amazing algorithm to determine if the signature, message, and public key in the package is legitimate. This algorithm is one of blockchain's most ingenious things. It is able to verify two crucial pieces of information. One, the signature was created using the corresponding private key of the provided public key in the package. And two, the signature was created using the same message as the provided message in the package. Notice how in this entire process, the miner is able to verify that the transaction is indeed the will of BLT without ever seeing BLT's private key. So a miner can add multiple transactions onto his new block. The miner must validate each transaction in the way I just described. The miner finds the correct nonce and announces this block with information about all the transactions that he added to it to the network. Other miners first verify that the nonce is correct, then verify that each transaction described in the proposed new block is legitimate. If all is correct, other miners vote OK and add this new block to their own blockchains. A new block that contains BLT's transaction has now been added to the blockchain. 